G'day viewers, it's the end of another week and what better way to kickstart the weekend than celebrating how totally fucked up the world is with Totally Fucked Up Friday. Let's start with one of the recurring stories I've been covering, government proposals to essentially fuck up the internet as we know it. And starting in Australia, I've been promoting the story for a while, the Australian Federal Government has plans, some nasty, nasty plans to essentially censor the entire internet with a filter. Now, this uh, has recently been put on hold until after the coming federal election. Now, I stress the point out, this is not because the government's suddenly gone, maybe this is a bad policy, it's just an act of political fucking cowardice where they've backed away because they've got enough problems trying to get re-elected without one more distraction. So we really won't know at all what's likely to happen until after the federal election. But one other policy that doesn't get quite as much coverage I'd like to point out is a completely different government department, the Attorney General's department, wants to monitor pretty much all internet activity in Australia. Uh, again, they're being really secretive of this, so a newspaper lodged a freedom, freedom of information request to find out what stage the government's plans were at, and they got a government report which had gone through the ISPs, but as it was released to the journalists, 90% of the report was censored, just blacked out. 90% of it. And the government's response to why they did that was because this is at an early stage, and if they let the information out now, it could promote unnecessary public debate. Yeah. I'm not aware of any debate of public policy that's unnecessary. But the government seems to have decided they really don't want people talking about when they're going to be monitoring them 24-7. Now I'm going to follow that one up by pointing out this is essentially a worldwide problem. Whenever I do a story about uh, the Australian government doing some sort of censorship or monitoring, I get what to me are quite stupid and naive comments of people going, wow, I'm glad I don't live in Australia, you guys have no rights. I can pick virtually any country in the world where something similar or worse is happening. This week I'll use the UK as an example. One of the last and ugliest bits of legislation rushed through by the British Labour government before they just lost an election was called the Digital Economy Bill. And one aspect of it was uh, monitoring uh, user activity for you know, copyright infringement. And punishments included getting you, your family, your whole household kicked off the internet based on accusations of copyright infringement. Not having it proved in court, but having a record company or film company accusing you of copyright infringement could get you kicked off the internet. Now, this policy is still in place as we speak, with the Tories in power, um, and in fact the government department responsible for administering it decided it was kind of too hard to police, you know, is someone really infringing copyright? We should get someone else to monitor this. We should get someone else to handle that. Guess. Guess who they're suggesting. Yes, when a record company or a film company or a TV company accuses someone of uh, copyright infringement, Guess who gets to police the investigation and evidence? The film and entertainment companies! With no fucking oversight! Now, besides being terrifying and stupid, it has been pointed out this is actually illegal. It's in contravention of the already fucked legislation. So in case you're not picking up the thread, people, when governments introduce legislation, that's only half your problem. As fucked as the legislation is, Usually, they'll just sell you out even further to commercial interests. So, you know, don't get complacent, because this shit is happening all over. And I'll round out with a totally different topic. There's a big story in the US this week where a conservative pundit released a video that showed uh, a black woman who works in the Department of Agriculture in the US s relating a story where she said she basically didn't want to help a poor white farmer who was going to lose his farm because black people have it worse. So why would she help a white person? Proving that black people are the racist! And there's a big shitstorm, and the White House actually had this official sacked really quickly. Turns out, in a surprising turn, the conservative pundit is a fucking liar! His name's Andrew 
Breebart, and he's basically got a track record of deliberately falsifying stories, putting together videos that look damning, but are selectively edited to essentially put forward a complete fucking lie. Now, you may have heard of a story that was a little while ago, uh, a community organisation called Acorn. They were outed as helping some guy uh, set up uh, a brothel. He was going to set up a whorehouse. He went in, this young white guy, who's a Republican shit stirrer, went in dressed up as a pimp, like a 70s pimp, and he got his hose with him, and because Acorn helped people set up businesses, he wanted them to help him set up his business. And the person in Acorn seemed to be very helpful about how I would help you set up a brothel and run a prostitution ring. Even though, you know, this is obviously a bad thing. Big shitstorm. Turns out, Fucking lies! The guy did not wear the pimp suit into the interview. He filmed that outside, then changed into conservative business clothes. He did not talk about running a brothel. It was all selectively edited to make the people look bad. And it took fucking ages for anyone in the media to acknowledge that's a lie. And I mean anyone. Certainly not everyone. All the conservative outlets act as if this guy did nothing wrong. This is the same guy who then thought, hey, I'll go and prove that these Democrats are bad and dressed up as telephone repairmen and tried to install recording devices in their phones. Yes, he thought an idea for the truth was to lie about who he was and install illegal recording devices on the phone lines of a political party. And he seems to be surprised that the feds are interested in that. But back to this story. This Andrew Breibart guy who was behind promoting all of those promoted this. He deliberately edited this speech uh, because what the woman actually said was her impulse was to say, yeah, screw the poor white farmer, what about the poor black farmers? But then she checked herself and said, no, that's wrong. And she worked for this guy to help save his farm, did save the white farmer's farm, has been a lifelong friend of the white farmer. So this guy Breibart knowingly falsified the entire thing. He set up a deliberate lie. He set forward a video that seemed to say the complete opposite of what he knew to be the truth. And everyone ran with it, and frankly, the Obama administration should be fucking ashamed of themselves for being so under the heel of the conservative fucktards that, oh no, we don't want people to think Black people are racist, we better act really quickly before fucking investigating. But really, the cherry on the top of all this for me is after it's been shown, you know, this is a complete fucking lie, Glenn Beck and Rush Limbaugh and other fucking morons are actually saying they now think the entire thing was a scam cooked up by the Obama White House to discredit conservatives. So these lying fucking morons get caught out in the lie and they not only can't admit to promoting fucking lies, they blame the people who are the actual targets of the slanders. And this bullshit isn't even fringe. This bullshit is what passes for mainstream. <laughs>